the last episode of second season will air next Wednesday, or maybe it aired already, I'm not sure, because I was here on Wednesday, <laughs> so I didn't get a chance to see it. Um, then after a couple of months, once it's all packaged and wrapped up, it'll be available maybe in six months from now, inshallah. Second part, uh, how can we promote it so it can be televised in the United States? The thing with the United States is, <laughs> Your American networks, your main networks, they do not broadcast other countries' television shows. They remake shows, right? Like The, the Office was a British show and they um, remade it, the American version. So you wouldn't be seeing this show on a major network. What you may see on a major network would be sort of, um, they're in negotiations right now and because of the writer's strike, everything got delayed but they would buy the concept idea and make the American version, a different writing team, a different actors, a whole different um, version of it. So that's what they would do, because that's just the way America feels, or the network feels that Americans wouldn't be able to relate to a show made in another country because there's different um, nuances of a, the American Muslim community. So that's why they wouldn't buy this show. So uh, the only way to see it right now is on YouTube or buying the DVDs. Um, and then we'll see what happens with the negotiations. I was wondering if you're engaging in any uh, viral, viral marketing to basically get it popular amongst, you know, peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, uh, word of mouth, and thus build a base that way, which is how The Office got so popular here in the U.S. Um, well, in Canada, it's already extremely popular, and because it's selling around the world, um, we've sort of, it's, it's got a lot of, um, it has a broad fan base already. And what, what they do, if you go to littlemoss.ca, they have what they say, um, the rants by Babur Siddiqui. And he sort of, expa he sort of um, takes one subject like the weather or music, and he'll start to rant on it. So if you go on the website, you'll see little video clips of him ranting. And those are sort of messages that I think, I believe they're also put on YouTube and they go around. So that's what we've been, what we've been doing. The, the show seemed, you know, the show depicts Muslims as being pretty westernized. Have you guys got a lot of opposition from the Muslim community? Is you know, think Muslims is too, you know, Western or you know, too liberal? I, I guess to, liberal. you know, liberal, right? It you know, it, it it varies according to who you ask. What I find is, um, and what I always tell non-Muslims that Muslims are not a monolith. That you you won't find one Muslim opinion. Is that it depends on where the, who the Muslim is and what their and what their background is. Like from what I generally find is younger Muslims tend to be our main demographic. We're born and raised in North America. They tend to understand the show and relate to it the most. And then like my parents or um, some of the more conservative immigrant um, members, either they don't understand the comedy or they think that somehow it's making fun of them or they're not sure what it is. So I find that the further away you go from someone's cultural background, then the less they're able to relate to the show. And it's interesting to me, um, like the extreme right wing, like Michael Corrin, um, they are very upset that this show is, has become very successful. They're very angry and they feel that it is wrong to normalize and humanize Muslims because I'm whitewashing Muslims and I'm softening Canadians for the next terrorist attack. And they're very angry. And it's funny, and, and so they are, they are almost ideologically aligned with the extreme sort of spe spectrum of the Muslim community who feel that their version of Islam is the correct version, and that Babur should be the Imam, and that, imam, and that Amar doesn't have a beard and is too westernized, he shouldn't. And so, it, weirdly enough, the right-wing <laughs> non-Muslims and the, the extreme right-wing uh, Muslims are almost aligned with what, because they both feel that they have um, the right to decide what image of Islam it, and Muslims should be portrayed. And, it, and I find it interesting that they ever actually heard each other talking, they would like be appalled that, that they're, they're, they're bedfellows about the same issue because that's what their complaints are. Like, so the really, really orthodox Muslims feel that you know, Amar you know, should be more, you know, he should have a beard, he should wear a topi, and he should, you know, he should be giving you know, more strict khutbahs, and Babur should have been the one who should have been the Imam. But they actually have you know, um, blogs about this. And it's interesting when I read them because it, what, there's a certain lack of sophistication in certain parts of the Muslim community when it comes to television shows like this because the actor who played, like we hired the actors on the basis of their acting, right? Not the basis of their background or their religion or their morality because that's not important. The important thing is, is that can they act and can they pull together a really well-crafted show? And so there are Muslims who complain that, you know, why aren't all the actors Muslim? They should have gone with the authentic Muslims. Um, the actor who plays Amar, 
he's had a you know a wide career and he's played different characters and he played um, a homosexual in one of his other roles and this and it's interesting because there's one Muslim who just is, is so upset he he takes uh, clips of him pl playing that role and he takes clips of him playing imam he puts them together and he has like a YouTube thing he's trying to get Muslims to boycott the show and get them all riled up and he's going to see what they're doing and they're, they're um, defaming Islam even though it has nothing to do with the television show it's completely irrelevant what his role was in the past didn't have, you know factor into that decision because he was auditioned and he and based on his acting ability we chose him because if we had chosen all Muslim actors none of them could act the show wouldn't have been successful and it would have died and it would have been pointless so I find that there's a certain amount of um, media literacy that our community is lacking in we don't understand what it takes to get a show like this on television and what you have you know you have to have excellent writers even if they're not Muslim and they're not Muslim because Muslims don't go into this profession, unfortunately, so it's a very. We've been trying to get Muslims um, hiring them as interns and consultants, but it's very difficult because the majority of our community goes into fields like medicine and engineering and science. And I don't blame them. I mean, those are very secure and well-paying jobs, and it's easy to make good money. But you know, we also need Muslims to start heading into the arts and entertainment and filmmaking and writing because if we don't start representing our own community from our own perspectives, then we leave that job to other people, and we see all of what happens. So now I could. Um, the question I have is, do you believe that the show right now uh, is viewed as an ethnic show? And in that sense, should Muslims continue to build other ethnic shows? Or should, do you see them going to more mainstream shows? It's interesting. I mean, I find that what, what Muslims are, what non-Muslims are telling me is that it's a very relatable <laughs> show. And even if you're not Muslim, you watch this show because it's universal. And if you belong, if you belong to a synagogue, if you belong to a church, if you belong to any um, house of worship, the issues, you know, of having the very conservative leader who thinks he should have been the leader, the, the rebellious teenager, the feminist, the, the Muslim, who, the person who doesn't really practice their faith, just practices it as long as it helps their business. Otherwise, they're sort of, you know, shady, Muslim, the sh shady characters. All these people are arch archetypes of people that exist in their community. So they feel that they can watch it, learn about Muslims, yet still relate to their own community. And I feel that if the show hadn't been as relatable and, and as well-crafted and well-acted as it was, people wouldn't just watch it because it was, had Muslims in it. People don't watch television because they want to learn something. They watch television because they want to be entertained. And this is a very entertaining show, so it, 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 it um, succeeds on both levels. Number one, people turn it on because they say it's very funny and it's entertaining and they like to watch it with their families. And then number two, it just happens to have Muslim characters in it. So I think that you can transcend that sort of ethnic barrier um, and make a show that and, you know someone who didn't want to watch a show about Muslims would watch because it just is a very funny show and they just happen to have Muslims in it and they forget that it's about Muslims. So I think we succeeded on both levels and it's very rare to be able to make a show that um, educates and also entertains at the same time. Um, you know what? To be honest, I was trying to become a doctor. <laughs> I shouldn't. I shouldn't like. Uh, um, I, I mean, I shouldn't wrap people's hands for not. We were going into medicine because I was trying. You know. I mean, and, and to be fair to me, I was brainwashed by my parents <laughs> because they really, really wanted you know their children to become doctors. And so I actually was in um, a, for, a, a science program at the University of Toronto, trying very, very hard to get into medical school. And you know. Um, at the time, of course, I didn't realize it, but my skills didn't lie in science and math and physics and chemistry. And so my marks, although I could get them really high in high school by repeating all my subjects in summer school, <laughs> which is the trick I was using to get a really high average, once you get to university, they don't let you do that anymore. You have to actually get the marks that where you get them. <laughs> You're not allowed to repeat the whole year again. And so that's where I sort of hit the wall in terms of my abilities um, as a science person. And so I was really um, flabbergasted when I got my rejection letter because I did not have a plan B at all. I was like, oh no, you know, what What am I gonna do with my life? And my parents didn't have a plan B, which was marriage. <laughs> so suddenly all these, you know, men from the United States, for some reason there's a lot of Muslims from Pakistan who are studying at the universities here who just need that, that one little thing to get the green card. So they started showing up in my parents' house with like that living room scene. <laughs> I was very that if I didn't have a plan B, it was already going to be set for me because my mother 
you know, was like th so thrilled that I didn't get to medical school because she believed, you know, in marriage for girls at a young age. And my father always thought that I mean, marriage was what women who failed in their careers did. And so they always had this thing. So while they were fighting it out, I um, quickly applied to different.